Right, I think we are live. Hello, welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. And as always, but more important than normal, please let me know if the sound and the video is working okay. And the reason why I say more important than normal is I've spent the last two days fiddling around with all of my stuff. Thank you very much, Chrissy. It seems like it's working fine. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, behind the scenes changes going on to the camera setup, the microphone setup. Just want to check that everything is working fine. In fact, it should be slightly better quality uh, than, it, than it is normally. Um, I have changed a few settings, so let me know. Tonight, we're going to be playing through a solo game of Sabika, but this playthrough video is going to be a little bit different from a lot of the other playthrough videos that I do. So bear with me while I explain it. Um, a lot of the videos that I do on the channel are sponsored playthroughs, where the publisher uh, actually you know, pays me some money in order to help promote their game. For those playthroughs, I like to take the time out to learn the game properly, practice playing it and everything else. Uh, this is not a sponsored playthrough tonight. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning that, and I have to say a big thank you to uh, Ludanova for sending me a review copy of the game and for sending me an advanced copy of the game to give me a chance to look at it. Um, but tonight's playthrough is funded through Patreon. And I've had a heck of a day. I almost cancelled tonight's playthrough because I'm feeling absolutely awful today, not sleeping well, and I've had a really, really crazy busy day. But I don't want to let people down and I enjoy playing games. So I'm, I'm playing the game tonight to give me a, a boost at the end of tonight. That said, as you might see from the table, it's not set up. Now, the reason I'm giving you this warning now is if you are tuning in to this video or if you're watching it back afterwards and you're expecting me to teach you how to play the solo game of Sabika, I'm not going to do that because I don't know how to play the solo game of Sabika. Now, what tonight's video is going to be, and I've done, I've done a couple of these in the past, is I'm actually going to be learning how to play the solo game from the rulebook. So as you can see, I haven't got it set up yet. Richard's in the chat. Hi, Richard. Thank you for joining in. Um, so yeah, I'm not ready for this. Now, as I say, my normal videos, the ones that are sponsored by publishers, I've got it all ready. I've spent the afternoon practicing it. Today, I haven't. Richard's saying he's, he's reading down the rules himself. Yeah, I will teach you. No, I'm afraid I'm not going to teach you. We're going to learn together. So we're going to learn how to do the, the solo game. Now, I have covered this game I have done a two-player uh, version of this game, two-player video, uh, which was a Patreon-only stream, so I have played the multiplayer game once. But as I say, we're going to learn how to play the solo game tonight, and we're going to be doing it together. So if you don't like that kind of video, thank you very much for watching so far. But if you like the idea of sitting and watching me learn how to play a solo game, and then I'm going to be playing it, then that's what's going to happen. So off we go. And the reason why I've not set it up is... I didn't want to assume that the setup was the same as for the two-player game. I assume we're using the one and two-player side of the board. That's as far as I've got. So, off we go. Let's learn together. Solo game. Where is it? Is this the solo game? Solo mode. Take on the Automa Yusuf, another Nasrid nobleman who will compete against you for prestige and prominence in the history of the Kingdom of Granada. Game setup. Right. Set up for a two-player game as normal, but with the following exceptions. And saying that I haven't done any preparation, it's taken me an hour to get the studio ready just for this. So it does still take me quite a lot of time. It's not like I turn the stream on at eight o'clock and suddenly everything's there. So yeah, big thank you to all of my patron supporters that fund the channel and make these videos possible, basically. Right, before placing the major poems on the board, remove card F1 from the game. So let's, let's do that first. The major poems are, we didn't bother with these last time we played. Um, because they're quite powerful uh, and they're very expensive. So major poems, F1. So F1, you don't use in the solo game. Uh, I think in a two-player game, there are four major poems. So Richard's going to watch later on at two times speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk really slowly so that when Richard watches it by later at times two, it actually sounds normal. No, I'm not going to do that. So major poems. We need four of them. We have one, two, three, four. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press a preset uh, on my fancy new camera. I say it's new. It's not that new. Let's just have a look at the major poems that we've got. You see that? There you go. Yeah, do it backwards, <laughs> says Mike. Um, yeah, and if you're not a patron supporter and you wonder where the Patreon money goes, buying new equipment like the PTZ camera that I've got fitted in the ceiling. So yeah, so these are major poems. 
Um, basically, you can buy, there's four of them available in a two-player game, I think. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the chat, because Adam from Ludanova is here. Um, and he'll tell me if I get anything wrong. But these are the four that have been chosen. The rest of them go back in the box. We don't need those. Uh, and the cost to buy them is shown here. And what they do is shown here. So these are kind of like end of game scoring conditions. And I'm just going to have a quick look at these now. Earn two points for each minor construction you have. I'm going to have to remind myself what a minor construction is. I think it's these. I think these are the minor constructions. Yeah, they are. So for every minor construction I have, two points each, maximum of 14, if I have this. Right, this one. Earn 2, 4, 6, 9, 12, 15 for achieving 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 more architectural balances. Now, architectural balances are where you match symbols. So the more of these you've got, the more points I'm going to get. So these two are both about the minor construction bonuses. Uh, I'm just going to move the microphone a bit closer to me. Let me know if that sounds any clearer, because I think it might have sounded a bit distant. Uh, this one, and 2, 4, 6, 9, 12, 15 for having advanced on the favour track. So the favour track is at the top of the board, uh, and we're going to earn points if we've advanced on that. And this one is two points for each major construction. So as I say, they're, they're, they're not end, they're end game scoring tiles, um, but if I'm going to go for one or, or two of those, I need to decide which ones I'm going to go for. You can only go for two of them uh, in the game. Right. What else is different about the setup? Uh, player boards are slightly different. Oh, right. There isn't really that much different about the setup. So back to the setup, which, as I say, I didn't get a chance to do before the stream started. And I didn't want to assume that it was the same. So Rondel setup. Let's move this out of the way. We have the Rondel setup here. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. In a three-play game, you know, Sultan's workers on the squares marked with the matching silhouettes. Yeah, so we need to place the Sultan's workers, which is basically a dummy, a dummy player. Uh, and I'm going to lie them down. So they start off on these spaces around here. And if you, if you move to a, a space that has one of those workers, uh, you have to pay an extra coin. I'll be, I'll be sort of drip feeding you the rules as I remember them if you don't know how to play. Uh, but as I say, you know, this is the, this is very much a rough video of Paul learning how to play a solo game. Um, raw materials and the raw, uh, raw materials stroke goods into the raw materials stroke goods bag. I've done that. That's one thing I did do. Take one randomly and place them on each of those spaces on the board. Um, on each square, ensuring the raw material side is face up, which is that. So that's clay. That's sugarcane. That's sugarcane. And that's clay. There are three different types of raw materials. We got two of them out. Right. Place the dinars and materials next to the board. I've got that. And place one marble on each of those squares. So that's the marble. Yeah, off camera, I've got all of the coins and the resources. Main board setup. Right, the narrator token. So, I, in fact, I've got a preset for this. I think it's preset two. Is it preset two? It's preset two. So that's the narrator token. Uh, that's basically the round marker. There's five rounds in the game, uh, and that's going to move along each round. The Sultan's Wishes, that's these. So what we need to do is divide the Sultan's Wishes into... I'm going to try not to lean forward, because otherwise my head obscures the shot. Uh, so we shuffle the Sultan's Wishes into A's, B's, and C's. So we've got three A's three B's and two C's. Is that right? Is there only eight of it? I'm always worried that I lost a component. Yeah, there are supposed to be three C's. Okay, I may have lost one of the C's, but we'll... Oh, no, it's here. There you go. Right, okay. So we're going to choose one of the A's at random, one of the B's at random, one of the C's at random. And then these are not used. So we don't use those. They go out of the game. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put the A on... And in fact, do we put them in a random order? Randomly place one tile on each of the spaces. Yeah, so you don't put them in order. It, it's random which ones go where. Monica's giving me jokes. Where's Paul's pokey bit of wood? Paul's pokey bit of wood is here. Right, the first one is a B tile. 
and that's going to go there. The next one is the C tile, and that's going to go there. See, intuitively, I want to put them A, B, C, but you don't. You shuffle them and you randomly place them on the spaces there. Now, the Sultan's favours, what's going to happen? As I say, we've got five rounds in the game. This narrator token is going to move across like this. And in round two, we're going to move this Sultan's favour to here. And for each of the conditions on there, we're going to score one point. Then in round four, we move this Sultan's favour to here. And then we score this Sultan's favour as well as this Sultan's favour. So basically, this one here is going to score three times during the game. It's going to score at the end of round two, the end of round four, and it's going to score, sorry, the end of round two, at the end of round four, and at the end of the game as well. Whereas this one is only going to score once in the game, but it's going to be worth two points each. So yeah, so that's how the that's how the Sultan's Favours works. I think I've got that right. Um, major construction tiles. Filling the hexagonal spaces to the right and left of the rondelle. Yeah, now in a two-player game, we remove the blue major construction tiles marked with three and four. Okay, so that's this area here. So these are major constructions. Uh, and it doesn't matter, these these because you can build any one of them. So the order of these doesn't matter. Um, just going to place them all out. Like so. So these are major constructions. And over here, we're taking out the ones marked with three and four players. I'm going to be able to reach. I need longer arms. I need go, go gadget arms. I think the ones for three and four players might be. Ah, no, there's one. There's one. There we go. Done. Right. OK, so they are. Major construction, so they're not random at all. You, ju you just always put all of those out. Uh, next, storehouse tiles. Right, so these are the storehouse tiles. These all get shuffled and placed face down. Okay, and we actually divide them into two equal stacks. Yep, one's gonna go there. Uh, with two of the storehouses visible and one's going to go over here with again two of the storehouses visible. So there's two spaces, two action spaces in the game that you can go to to make your storehouse bigger. This one, if you go to this action space, you can take one of those tiles. If you go to this one, you can take one of those tiles and you improve your, your storehouses here. Right, minor construction cards. So that's these. So these get shuffled. Okay, and we're going to lay them out here. That. So we have four of them. And we have a thing there. Right, uh, so that's that done. And I need to remember that when you're building these, this is one thing I, I got wrong last time I played. Um, when you build these, you have to pay the resource shown on the bottom of the card, and then you may pay extra if you want to. I'm probably going to do a... Let, let me just get a, a zoom in. Is this going to work? Is this going to work? Yes. So that's a bit bigger, isn't it? Is that is that clearer? I'm just going to reset the transformation and get it so it's as clear as possible. Oh, wrong way. Here we go. There you go. So it's a bit zoomed in and these are shiny cards. So the overhead light is reflecting it. Yeah, so if this was a sponsored video, I would have realized that and I would have turned off the overhead lights because um, these are shiny cards. But anyway, the, these are the minor constructions uh, and this is, the, this is the action here where you can build a minor construction. No, this is the action where you can build a minor. This is build a minor construction or build a major construction and it's at the top as well. Right, next. Shuffle the minor poem cards. So that's these. Um, so these get shuffled and we draw cards to put them over here. So again, we'll press the button, but we're actually going to move over to this side of the board now. And we've got the minor poems. Uh, and in a two play game, it's three cards. So the minor poems actually have a left section and a right section. The left section is blue. Uh, which will give you an ongoing benefit for the rest of the game. 
and the right hand side right hand section is a is a one off bonus uh and when you do a poem you can choose which side you want basically um but the cost is based on how many so if you want more red poems the cost increases for each red poem you've already got something like that right done that done that done that done that shuffle the major poems we've done that yeah we did that oh each poem must need a different letter ah right hang on a minute hang on a minute uh and rara's just said <laughs> yeah so we've we've just got this we've just i've just worked this out um yeah, let me just show you this um, these poems again. So we thought there were synergy bonuses going on here. I don't have a preset for this. I really should have got a preset. So if you look at these, there is a letter on each of them. And you can't have two letters the same. So we've got C2 and C3 and D3 and D2. You can't have that. So we need to take the C out and we need to take the D out. So forget those. Instead, we're going to have G1. And we're going to have H4. Right, so you can't have synergy bonuses like we did. So, meanwhile, let's have a look at what we've got now. Two points for each minor construction. Uh, points if you're the first, second or third player who has the most pariahs. Uh, now, that's interesting. I don't know how that works in a two-player game. Uh, there's a little icon there, and I don't know what that means. I'll look that up in a minute. And the last one is... If you're the first, second, third player with the longest chain of consecutive ships. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure how this works in a two-player game. We'll have to look that up later, unless anybody in the chat knows. Adam will know. And apologies if you pointed that out earlier on. City tiles. Right. Okay, so we have 12 city tiles in the game. I have a preset for this. They're down here. I'll tell you a funny story about these in a minute. So there are 12 city tiles in the game. And what you do is you shuffle them. There's a mixture of um, uh, reds and blues. Yeah, it looks like you only score first and third. I th I, that's what I thought it would be. Okay, and then we're going to lay them out at random. Now, this tells you two things. First of all, it's the type of good that that city uh, wants more than anything else. You can deliver any type of good to any city, but you get a bonus if you deliver the type of good that they really, really want. Okay, so we've done that. So there's three not used. They go out of the game. Then what you do is you take these nine seals uh, and you put one on the left hand side. This is like a bonus for the first player to trade with that city and the funny stories is i've spent the last week thinking i've lost some of these tokens because i thought there was 12 of them i thought because there were 12 city tiles there should be 12 of these and there isn't there's only nine because there's only nine cities so uh you're all going to start off here and i think i think the boats might actually go there do the boats go there yeah the boats go there so all all of the players boats go here and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving those boats out and we're going to be moving to these these cities, um, but you have to pay the cost. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, right, where are we up to? Nine ships of their colour. Shuffle the city tiles, do all that. Shuffle the trade cards. Trade cards. So there's another type of card, which is the trade card. Now, this is definitely an end of game scoring card. So I'm going to give these a shuffle. Let's get the mouse out of the way. And give these a shuffle. And we're going to pick one of these at random and this is going to be our scoring card at the end of the game there we go um and and you don't have to buy this or anything like that you just get this at the end of the game so we're going to earn points for being present in cities that require ceramics and an extra point for each of these cities in which you are consolidated so let's just have a look at the cities Cities that require ceramics, we have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we only have five cities that need ceramics. So out of the cities that got taken out, we, one of those had ceramics. Um, so we're going to get points for being present in the cities that require ceramics. And that is a scoring card for all players 
at the end of the game. You don't need to do anything to uh, you know achieve that. You just you just get it. Right, player setup. Workshop, starting storehouses, a randomly selected architectural balance card. So each player starts with one of these architectural balance cards. There are no cows in this game, John, I'm afraid. Okay, we're going to start with that one. I'm just going to put it there. Um, four workers, two master builders, one merchant, one poet. Done that. Prestige token goes on space five. Um, pariah token. I, I, I assume it's pariah. It might be pariah or it might be paria. I don't know. Uh, but that goes on the zero space of the paria track. Favour token, which goes up there on the Sultan's favour track. Nine ships which are placed here. Two starting tiles. Choose one. Uh, choose one. So we need the starting tiles. Where's the starting tiles? Here, starting tiles. You get two of these at random. And you get one of them. Yeah, two, uh, two of them at random and choose which one you want. Okay. We'll have a look at that in a minute. I have starting tile seven and starting tile five. If you were playing a multiplayer game, it is the one with the highest number that gets the starting player token. Uh, and then each player earns the resources and bonus indicated on their chosen starting tile. So it tells you tells you what bonuses you get based on uh, your position in starting order. Right, okay, so back to the solo setup. It's going to be quite slow going this at the start of this video because as I say I'm learning from the rulebook which I know some people like and other people don't but the people who don't like it will have probably switched off by now so uh, Yusuf takes his action board instead of a workshop ah is that this yeah do we want to play with the Spanish side I don't think we do okay so this is Yusuf's action board which he takes instead of a workshop, as well as all of the components of the same colour, which he places in the usual way on the main board, except... Right, OK. So we're going to have pink. Pink uh, Make an update. Just confirm that major poem that Sergio was correct. The second position is ignored in this replay game. Thank you. That's what I would have assumed as well, because there's a little icon on there. But I can't quite see what that icon is, because my eyesight is not very good. It's probably two player with a cross through it. And to be honest, I've been playing games for a, a long time. That's what most two player games do. They, um, yeah, they remove the, the middle scoring. Right, okay, so. One of his ships, oh sorry, his workers, which he leaves standing next to his board. Right, so there's Yusuf's workers. I'm going to be stood up. One of his ships, which he places directly on the right-hand side, thereby consolidating his trade relationship of the nearest city to the Kingdom of Granada that meets the scoring criteria of the trade card on the map. So we know that it's ceramics. That needs ceramics and that needs ceramics. So there's a tie. That's one away. That's one. Oh, and this is one away as well. So there's actually three cities that are one away. And it says the nearest one. If there is more than one city that meets the criteria and is the same distance, you decide where to place the ship. Well, I'm not good at making decisions. I can't make decisions on behalf of an AI. We're just going to put it there. So that is an already consolidated trade relationship. Um, it doesn't say to remove this seal. So I'm going to leave the seal there. Yusuf does not take the initial four storehouses or the architectural balance card. However, his board shows four store boxes. Does it? Oh yeah, it does. Four store boxes. Um, reflecting his initial storage capacity, which will increase as he gets storehouse tiles. Yusuf is the starting player for the first round. So he takes the starting player token. I'm not going to bother using it. I am. I'm going to contradict myself straight away. Um... He does not earn, nor, of course, choose any starting tiles. Okay, so I, I can choose whichever starting tile of these I want. Um, yeah, not sure. Finally, shuffle Yusuf's four worker tiles together. So these are the components for the solo game. They're the components for the three-player game. We don't need those. Oops. No wonder I lose components. Uh, so we're going to shuffle these. 
form a face down pile. Okay, I guess that's which worker is going to move that turn. So that's that. And we've got some cards. Separate Yusuf's worker cards into three decks. So one's for the merchants, one's for the uh, master builders, and one for the poets. Yeah, I'm going to guess we shuffle each deck separately. Shuffle each deck separately. Place each deck face down next to his board. Right, okay, sorted. Okay. Yusuf's action board is a summary of the actions he will take during the game with his workers, as well as certain end of round reminders and end of game exceptions. You're now ready to begin the game. Whew. Right. I think we're ready. Are we ready? I think we are ready. Okay. Off we go then. Oh, Yusuf does earn that city seal. Ah. Oh, it does. It literally says that. As I say, my eyesight's getting worse. It says Yusuf earns that city seal. <laughs> so we're going to give Yusuf the seal. Thank you very much. Right. OK, we're ready. Um, let's go. How to play. So five rounds follows the usual phases of the game, which is actions, then end of round. Basically, the structure is relatively simple. Phase one action. When it is his turn to play, Yusuf must reveal top worker tile of his pile. We're going to just do it. There you go. It's the master builder. Um, the tile will show which of his workers to activate. Revealed tiles remain face up until the end of the round, at which point the draw pile is reformed. Next, Yusuf reveals the top card of the pile, uh, corresponding worker deck. Right, let me just look up Yusuf's cards. So Yusuf's cards are here. So we revealed this tile. This tile says Master Builder. So what we're going to do is we're now going to reveal a Master Builder and there is the card. Now, I don't know what that means, but let's find out. The revealed card includes, first of all, the bit at the top, the square of the corresponding rondelle to which the worker must move. Okay. The middle is the action to carry out having moved the worker. And then at the bottom is the points and the parriers that Yusuf earns. Right. So... Worker cards are always resolved from top to bottom. Create an individual discard pile under each deck in which you will stack the cards face up after they have been resolved. You can refer to these discarded cards during the game. If you must draw a card from a deck and the deck is exhausted, shuffle the discards and moment. Yeah, okay. So movement. Move the worker to the square in the corresponding rondel indicated at the top of the card and lay the worker down. He's moving to this one. Okay. Uh, Yusuf does not pay any movement costs or costs if his worker ends its movement on a square space. Uh, the rulebook is consistently using the phrase square for these, uh, which is, is a bit of a problem, Adam. If you ever do print another copy of the rulebook, change the word square to space because these are not squares. Um, that, that really confused me when I was reading the rulebook. Um, anyway, Yusuf doesn't pay. Special cases, if the worker is already on the space indicated by the card, I'm going to automatically translate it as space. Simply lay it down. Right. Discard the raw material and or marble from the secondary actions connected to that space if indicated by the card. So because there's an X there, we're actually going to discard that. So that's gone. Right. OK, what's next? Solo rules are not a separate rulebook. It's in, it's in the back of the main rulebook. When, uh, when Yusuf first activates a master builder in a round, he will have two, two, two workers to use from. Yes. In this case, move to the space indicated by the card using the master builder closest in a clockwise direction to that. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at the start of the game, they're off the board. But later on in the game, they will be on the board. In the case of the Master Builders, Yusuf may have to have to move one of them to a space where the other is already present. In such a case, discard the worker card without resolving it and reveal a new one. Because, yeah, basically you cannot move your Master Builder to the same space where your other Master Builder is. So if that would happen in the solo game, uh, you discard the card and reveal a new one. Right. Actions. We are carrying out the action in the middle of the card. Um, if it's blank, there's no action. And some cards have two actions. 
So we're carrying out the major construction action. Uh, Yusuf does not manage any resources, so he carries out all of his actions at no cost. Um, right, so major construction action. Take the highest numbered major construction tile from the current era. era. So this is eras one and two. No, so this is era one, that's era two. And we change to era two when we get to round three, I think. Something like that. So these tiles are actually not in use yet. We're only using these tiles at the moment. This is era one. And yeah, that's era two. So take the highest numbered major construction tile. That's why they're numbered. I didn't understand why they were numbered in the multiplayer game. Uh, that matches the Sultan's desired building type. Then place it next to his board and advance his favour token by one space, although Yusuf earns no bonus from this. Right, what is the Sultan's favoured type? Hmm. Take the highest numbered major construction tile from the current era, that's here, that matches the Sultan's desired building type. What am I missing? Where is... Oh, this one. That's the Sultan's desired building type. Got it. Thank you very much, Sergio. So the Sultan wants um, this, these two things. So buildings and windows. So we're looking for the highest numbered tile that matches the Sultan's desired building type. So that is, well, where's number, number nine? Does that match? Number nine does match. So he's taking number nine. There you go. He does not earn the major construction bonus shown on the tile. Right. There you go. Cool. Done, I think. If no major construction tile matches the Sultan's desired building type, simply take the tile from the current era with the highest number. Right. Boom. Now, I'm not going to read through all of the actions right now. I'm going to read through them when we do them. But then, after doing all of that, scoring, he earns... The points and the parriers indicated at the bottom of the card. So he's basically going to get one point and two of these things. That's it. If anybody knows, are they parriers or pariahs? So option one, parriers. Option two, pariahs. If anybody knows, please let me know in the chat whether it's parriers or pariahs. Right. I think that's it. That's, that's Yusuf's first turn. You basically get four turns in a round, from what I remember. It's option two. So, parriers. No, sorry, pariahs. <laughs> Although Raz F says option one. How is it spelt? It is spelt um, P-A-R-I-A. -A. There is no H on the end. Does he advance in the bag track? Oh, yes, thank you. I think it said that. Did it say that? I think it said that, and I forgot it. Yes, advance his favour token by one space. There you go. Smashing. Right. We're all done. Great super smashing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So my go. So here we go. I've got full freedom. Oh, I haven't even chosen my starting resources yet. <laughs> I forgot to choose my starting tile. Um, I want to know what one of them does. It's got a thing with a tick on it. I think that is a good. Yeah, I think I'm going to take that one. So I get three coins, one, two, three. Um, I get a good, an actual completed good. Uh, and I get a marble. I'm gonna take a marble and I'm gonna take a completed good. Uh, presumably I take it from the bag. So I'm gonna take ceramics. No, sorry. Is it a ceramics? Yeah, ceramics. I'm going to put ceramics there. So at the start of the game, uh, if you've not played the game and you don't know how it plays, this this is my player board. Uh, let's just move up so you can't see the horrible microphone. Oops, wrong button. Sorry. <laughs> Completely the wrong button. That's the button I meant to press. There you go. Preset three. Right. Uh, yeah, so what you have is you have these four storehouses. 
uh, and the capacity of each of these storehouses is one thing. Uh, you can upgrade them over the course of the game, but at the moment each of my storehouses can only hold one thing, which you can see by this icon here. This icon, one little box, means that it can only hold one thing. So that's how that works. Pariah means outcast. It's pronounced paria. Right, okay. Who knows? <laughs> right, so what we're going to do is the start of the game, uh, my first action, I can choose any of my four workers and I can go to any space that I want to go to. Later in the game, you will uh, only be able to move two spaces clockwise, but at the start of the game, uh, all of your workers are here. So basically, I can do whichever of those I want to, but there is obviously a cost. If I go to a space that contains other workers, I, I have to pay the cost. So, yeah, Skyscroft Guys, yeah, I've got two good strategies. Minor constructions are aimed for this major poem, yeah, or the ships. And there's a lot of options. There's, there's a lot of ways in this game to get points and, and how you do it. I can't remember what these trade tokens are for. Ah, yeah, we want the trade tokens for that, don't we? So we want trade tokens, we want blue poems, and we want that. So do we get... I mean, I've, I've got the ceramics. I've actually got the ceramics to start with. So if I really wanted to, right now I could totally go here. I think I can go here, send a ship to Argyll, and I could deliver ceramics to here. Now, does that get me immediately that action? Because if that immediately gets me that action, I don't really have much in the way of resources. So I'm probably going to need some resources. I can't even remember in this game how you get resources. Um, that's the market, isn't it? You can buy stuff from the market. Hmm. Okay, so are we sticking with Paria? Or Paria? <laughs> Yeah, you get the right one for consolidating. Right, okay, yeah. So I'm going to get that bonus if I go there. That's for when it's consolidated. So actually, I think that's probably a good move. Because I don't really want that at the moment. Okay, let's do it. Uh, which is the ships, which is the merchant, which is the middle one. So, oh, and we get a thing. Oh, let's do it. Right, so merchant is going here to this action. So this action it is I can basically do the ships. Uh, and that action is, is the reference card. The reference card is actually really good for this game. This is the the export action. Yeah, export action, page 12. And I am just going to check what I'm doing is correct. So we're exporting goods. You can't export raw materials. Um, choose a city on the map where you have no presence. I have no presence here. Um, I am going to spend one coin. And I'm going to move my ship to here and I'm going to get the seal and the seal just goes there. Um, export one or two of your goods. So you can only export one or two goods. I'm exporting some ceramics. You get one point and one paria for each good you export, which is printed on here. You pay the money, you deliver the goods. For each good you get one and one. But if the good matches the city, you get an extra one and one. So basically I get two points and two of those spiky things. Um, and then I earn the city bonus. And that city bonus is I can take either gypsum or wood. Um, so I'm going to take some wood. There you go, which I'm going to put in the storehouse. She used to have the ceramics. And I think that's it. Oh, and then I get to do the secondary action, which on this side costs zero. So basically the secondary actions... Uh, if you if you notice, each secondary action is between two spaces and you pay the cost printed on it depending on where you are. So where I am right now, that is zero, which means I can take that. That is a raw material. That's clay. That goes on my player board here. You can only ever have one of each raw material. If you ever take a second raw material, then you take it, but it immediately gets upgraded into a good from what I remember. Um... Oh yeah, the quarries as well. The quarries is where you can get resources. Thank you. I thought there was a way where you could get lots of resources. Right, that's my first turn done. So now uh, we're going to discard that card. And we're going to do Yusuf. Yusuf is moving a master builder again. And this time it's there. So his second master builder is going there. But there is no action 
and he just gets two points. So that that's quite an easy card to run. Right, it's back to me. Um, one thing I like about solo modes where it takes less time to run the AI as it did my time. I did that wrong. If I would take a second raw material, you upgrade the raw material you have instead. Oh, thank you. Right. Thank you for the correction. So if you take a second raw material of what you've got, you don't take it, you leave it on the board and you upgrade the one that you've got. There you go. Thank you. Right. Pink points. I got me points. I did. Pink points. Yeah, we did. The, we did the points. I think we did the points. Yeah, started on five. Got one, got another two. Now on eight. Yeah, there you go. So that's it. That's your soft turn. Right, what am I going to do? Uh, I have some wood and I have some marble. Um, so I can do lots of things. Oh, I mean, do we have an idea of what we're going down? Re do we really have an idea? I don't think we do have an idea. Let's go. Let's maybe go for these minor constructions. So minor constructions, I can go here. That's free. It costs the resource that's printed on the bottom of it. Ah, is there any windows available? There isn't. Oh, that's a shame. But we want to match. We want to match colours if we can. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to use my master builder. I'm going to go to this action and I'm going to choose to build a minor construction. Now, when you do a minor construction, you can spend one minute to cycle these cards and get a point. That might be useful in case I get any of those. In case I get any of those windows. In fact, are those windows printed on these cards or not? I'm just going to have a look through these cards, see what's here. There's lots of, yeah, there are windows. Okay, right, there's lots of windows. There's lots of windows, lots of trees, lots of castles. Right, okay, so. Is it a window or a door? Oh, I'll tell you what, hang on a minute. I got something wrong here. And, and apologies if anybody spotted this earlier, but I've just, I've just noticed something that I did wrong. Let me just zoom in. Uh, we need another preset. We absolutely need another preset. I'm gonna start on preset five. Where was preset five? Preset five was there. We definitely don't want that preset. <laughs> uh, here we go. That's my that's my that's my head, and that's all of the cables. We don't want that one. Right. Okay. I'm just going to show you what I what I did wrong. Here we go. Again, if this was a sponsored video, I'd have all of these all sorted out ready. Okay. Preset five done. So what I did is I took one, thinking that the Sultan wanted. Well, that's Windows. Right, but because my eyesight is not very good, I took that one. That is doors. So in fact, that that one on the left, I think matches these, and the one on the right matches the minor ones. So in fact, it's not that one he's taking. It is the one with that icon on. So it's either one, seven, or two. So it's number seven. Yeah, they do look really close. But it's taking number seven. Right, I think we've fixed it. So yeah, I think the I think the icon on the left is from the major improvements, and the icon on the right is from the minor improvements. Once you know that, that's really helpful to know. So there are no windows here. The Sultan wants windows, so I think I might do this. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm actually gonna cycle. So I'm going to spend one money and I'm going to cycle these cards in the hope that we find some windows. Oh, there's a window. And now I, I should totally buy the window. Right, okay, so the cost to do a minor construction is the resource printed on the bottom of the card. Thankfully, I have the marble, right? So I'm going to spend the marble. Um... Then I can, if I want to, spend another two up to another two resources. And the more resources you spend, the more points you're going to get. I'm happy, I think, with just the marble. The question mark there means it's optional. So I'm just going to spend the marble. I get three points. One, two, three. And we have built this. 
I can flip over Yusuf's main building to see the type. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you've built it, you can you can flip it over. Because normally you would get the bonus and then you flip it over. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Javan. Designer of the game is in the chat. So thank you very much for that. Right, we've got a window and I'm going to attach it to there. Now there gives me this bonus. Let me just show you my player board. So what I've done is I've actually now linked these two together. This was my starting card. And what I've done is I've put that there and I've knocked this guy over. Um, and because these match, I get that bonus that's printed on there. So I can take four of money or pariahs uh, in any combination. Now I am a little bit short on money, but I know that these things are really useful. So I think, oh, and I get the point for cycling. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, I forgot you get a point if you cycle the cards. And we need to replace it with a new one. Oh, it's another window. So I think I'm going to take three money. One, two, three. And one of these things. Okay, that's my action done. We go over to Yusuf. Yusuf is wanting to uh, use his poet. I think that's the poet. Yep. So we reveal the card. So the poet is going here. Uh, and then he's taking that action. Right, so what's Yusuf doing? Yusuf is going to write a poem, which is carving a poem into the walls of the Alhambra. The first time Yusuf carves a poem, take the highest numbered minor poem available. <gasps> what? And place it next to his board. Wow, he gets a grey one straight away. What a cheat. Right, highest numbered. That'll be that one, H4. The second time he carves a poem... Choose the last major poem in alphabetical order and place it next to his board. The third time he carves a poem, take a minor poem. No, hang on a minute. I know. They're major poems. Let's read it again. The first time that Yusuf carves a poem, take the highest numbered minor poem. Yo, chat's probably shouting at me. <laughs> uh, so he takes 19, gets it next to his board. Right, okay. I'm just going to put them at the top. The second time he gets a major poem, the third time it's a minor poem, and the fourth time it's a major poem. And he says and so on, but he can't have more than two major poems. So it's minor, major, minor, major, and then minor, minor, minor after that. Do not overlap the poems that Yusuf manages to carve. Both parts, blue and red, must remain in view. However, none of the effects of his minor poems apply, so he ignores them. Right, okay, there you go. So he's taken a minor poem. And scoring. Yeah, I like this solo AI. Um, this is this is nice. It's simple. And we like simple in this house, especially after the day I've had. Skycroft was about to shout at me, but I realised in time. Yes, I did. And then we replenished that one. Right. Done. My go. What do I want to do? Oh, I don't know. I've got one piece of wood. That's all I've got. My master builder is here. My master builder could go to the quarry and get myself three lots of stuff. I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to send my master builder. We're going to go here. Oh, there's no secondary action there. Mm, no secondary action. If I go here, I'm going to get that. It's going to cost me one. But I don't get this stuff for free. It's going to cost me stuff. I could increase my storehouse. Oh, we could go here. I could increase my storehouse and get some sugar cane. And I do like increasing my storehouse. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go here. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to, I'm going to, you can do the second reactions, I think, in any order. Second reaction and the main action. Maybe not, but I'm probably going to do both of them. Oh, you don't think I replenish the market until the maintenance phase? Okay. Pop that back, pop that back. It's probably a good uh, good spot, actually. Are any of the poems good for shipping? Uh, sort of that one. Longest chain of connected ships. But I think Yusuf's going to take that one because it's the highest in alphabetical order. Anyway, storehouse. I can take one of these two storehouses. Uh, the cost is... What's the cost of taking a storehouse? I don't think there is a cost. 
Oh, minor poems. Yeah, I'm not sure. Tech in a storehouse. Let's just have a look. I think you just take it. Um, yeah, expand one of your storehouses or activate one of your storehouses. So I think I'm going to expand. Yeah, okay, let's expand and I'm going to take this one. I'm going to put it there. So that gets me one point uh, and it goes there uh, and you can see what's what's happened. So I've put this on here. I'm covering that, which means I score one point for covering it. And I now have in this storehouse, I have a capacity of three. So I can store three things in this storehouse. I immediately get this bonus here once. Uh, and instead of doing that, I could have activated this bonus. So next time I do that storehouse action, rather than taking a new storehouse, I can actually just get that. But I get that now. One, two. All right, what's Adam saying? Uh, nothing is replenished until the end of the round. Thank you. Uh, the materials or goods are never taken from the bag. Correct. They must always be taken from the rondelle. Ah, right. Okay. So, so in setup, I might have cheated. Is what is what is that what you're saying? So even in setup, when I got my good from the starting tile, are you saying that I should have taken it from the board? If so, I'm going to take that one. That that's the one that I took. Okay, so that shouldn't have been there. You never, ever take them from the bag. Right. This is great, this. Live help from the designer and the publisher. Um, I think that's it. I think that was my third turn. I went there, I increased my storehouse. I got that. We're done. Yusuf's fourth turn is going to be the merchant. Right, what's the merchant doing? The merchant is going here. And then the merchant's doing two actions. Right, okay, so the first action that your stuff is doing is exporting. Oh, secondary to take the sugar cane, thank you. Yeah, I did forget that. Spend one coin to take the sugar cane. Um, right, so what does your stuff do when he exports? Take one of his ships from the Kingdom of Granada and place it on the left-hand side of a city that has a seal and matches the scoring criteria of the trade card. Yep, so it has a seal and requires ceramics to be delivered to it. Um, in addition, that city must be the closest city to the Kingdom of Granada or to a city where he already has a presence. If there are two equidistant cities, you decide which city to place his ship in. Right, so... Um, Florencia wants it and is a distance of one. So it's there. Easy. Done. Done. He's got two seals. The next action he wants to do is the consolidate action. Yusuf consolidates his trade relationship with a city where he has a ship on the left-hand side of the city that matches the scoring criteria of the trade card. If he has a presence in more than one city that meets the requirement, you decide which. He consolidates his trade relationship. Done. He then moves his ship to the right-hand side of the city. If it's a red city, he does not earn the immediate bonus. Got it. If on your turn, you decide to consolidate your trade relationship in a city where Yusuf has already consolidated his relationship previously, he earns two points. Right, okay, I think we got it right. Oh, and of course, all actions are listed on his board. I don't need to refer to the rule book. I could pick this up and read this. <laughs> yeah, it's all there. So what have we just done? Consolidate. Yeah, okay, sorted. So that's it. That's Yusuf's turn done. My fourth action. Uh, we got the poet. So what do we want to do? We could take some money, but it's not that much. We could... Carve a poem. Now, carving a poem, I have wood. So it wouldn't be a very good poem. But we could. But what's my other option? Uh, I could carve a poem or I could activate one of my red poems. Well, I don't have any red poems. So, yeah, my options are 
take three money or carve a poem. So I'm thinking... Oh, I forgot the bottom of his card. Thank you. What was the bottom of his card? Uh, which one was it? What have I done? Oh, I've messed this up. It was two and two. That should be on the bottom. Uh, two and two. In fact, I can check that I've got those right because it should be all the face-up cards. So it's three. So three points from those. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, done the points right. Parriers. One, two, three. Uh, four, five. Yep, we're right. Thank you very much, chat. So I think I'm going here and I'm going to carve a poem. So minor poem or major poem? Ah, oh, okay. So they are expensive, but it's just money. So major poems, it, it's money and the commodities. Right, uh, minor poems are one plus one for every, yeah, they're four, right, okay, yeah, we can still do it. So do we want blue or do we want red? Now there's points, Sultan's favor here, he wants blue ones. So I'm just going to have a look at these two minor poems and see what we've got. So these are the two possible minor poems that I can I can carve. And we're looking at, at, at the left hand side. Um, so earn a PP, which is a point, prestige point, every time you perform a secondary action. Or use this scaffold instead of the usual one. Every time you carve a poem, earn one additional point for each material used. Okay. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to take the one on the right. I'm. I think I'm going to take this one. Yeah, I'll take this one. So it costs one money, plus one for every blue poem that I've already got. So it just costs me one money. Uh, and then I have to spend one resource. The second one is optional, but if I spend another one, it has to be something different. I only have one wood. So I put the wood in, carve the poem, get two points. And it's blue, so it goes, it goes over there. Right. There you go. I think that's it. I think that is my round done. And now we do the end of the round stuff. So in the end of the round stuff, let me just check the rules for the solo game. Uh, this phase proceeds as normal, with the following exceptions. Income. Yusuf does not receive any income even if he's consolidated his trade relationships with some of the blue cities. Starting player. If Yusuf is in the lead on the parry track, then he will be the starting player in the next round. If you're in the lead, you decide who will be the starting player. Okay? And worker tiles, we shuffle the worker tiles. Right. Okay. Nice. Right. Okay. So, end of round stuff. Let's just go through what happens again. So, first of all, income. Uh, cities in which you've consolidated your trade relationship and it's got a blue city. And some blue poems might also give this at this time. None. Then we advance the narrator token, one space. And it's landed on there, which means that goes there, as I mentioned earlier on. Um, so we now score the Sultan's Wishes. So it's basically for every seal, one point. Yusuf has two. I have one. All right, that's the seals done. The seals, by the way, can be cashed in at any time for one parrier or one uh, money. Then we all have to pay the parriers printed under the board. So it's currently two, which means we both move back two. Now, which way do you do this? Starting with the starting player. So pink moves first, one, two, and then I move and I go one, two, which means I'm slightly further ahead. So I can choose who goes first. Um, right. Reactivating workers. So all the workers stand up. Apart from the gold ones. The gold ones, uh, they just move one. And I forgot that, actually. When we did the multiplayer playthrough, um, I forgot most of the time that these all move 
one space clockwards. How, how am I going to remember this? That's those done. That one and that one. That's that done. And then that one and that one. That's that done. Right. Okay. Um, raw materials. So raw materials out of the bag. And we need one here. Got some more clay. Got some cloth. Got some more cloth. And we've got some more cloth. All the cloth. One marble goes on there. Ah, now that's interesting. Re oh, no, you just replenish. So if the marble wasn't taken, you don't add another marble. Uh, we need to add new minor constructions and we need to add new poems. Done, done, storehouse tile. Done. Okay, so round two, time for a glass of water. Initial thoughts, I like the solo mode. First of all, I like the game. The game is a solid medium weight Euro game. I like it, uh, having only played it once, but I did enjoy it. And the solo mode for me, this is the kind of solo mode that I like. Relatively low maintenance. Once you know what the actions are, it goes smoothly. And you could probably play a solo game of this 30 to 40 minutes, I would have thought. Obviously, this is going to be a lot longer. We're already an hour in and I've only played round one. But that's because you've been with me while we've been learning how to play. So this is going to be a much longer video. People are going to see this video and go, wow, solo playthrough, two hours. <laughs> no, no. This is a fairly short solo playthrough, I think. Um, or at least it will be once you know how to play. So we need to shuffle these tiles. Uh, and I, I need to decide who's going to go first. Well, this, this is the thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know who we want to go first. So I've got, whenever I carve a poem, I get extra points for every material that I've used. So I'm tempted to go down the carving of poems route. Even though, of course, none of these ones are for poems. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not bothering with the major ones at all, am I, really? So, yeah, is there any way I can carve the last major poem first? This one, well, it's only money. If I can get the money, then possibly. Um, but if I take that one, then Yusuf is just going to take this one because this is G, and I don't want him to take that one, because I want to be first on that track. Um, okay, so who's going to go first this round? Is it going to be me? Um, where are the spaces where I can get resources? Ah, it's going to cost me a bit of money. Yeah, there is no free spaces. So there's a second reaction there to take some ceramics. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna get I think I'm gonna let Yusuf move first, and I'm hoping he moves this master builder, but we'll see. So Yusuf's first turn in round two. He's moving the merchant. The merchant is going to here. Now, as a human player, you have to pay to move around the board. You get two spaces for free, but then you can pay to move more. Yusuf's a big cheater. Uh, and he just goes straight there and lays down. Oh, you can also, and if you don't know how to play the game, instead of moving your worker, you can actually rest, and you bring it back here, you get three money and one point. The advantage of resting is that next time you can put the worker straight back onto any of the areas. Anyway, what is Yusuf doing? Yusuf is doing the export action. So let's have a look at the sheet. I, I moved the wrong merchant. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> That's me, this one. Thank you. I'm blue, not pink. Um, take one of his ships from the Kingdom of Granada and place it on the left-hand side of a city that has a seal and match it the score. Right, okay, so we're looking for the nearest city that wants ceramics to him. So this one is actually three away. I, th I, th I think distance, is it distance as in cost? Or is it just distance? It's probably distance. That's two away. Um, where are the ones that need ceramics? One, two... Oh, this, this, sorry, this one. This is one away. Oh, he goes, oh no, he's got to have a seal. He's got to have a seal and match that. So there's one, two, three, four, 
Fine, that's even further away. So it's this one. It's Tunisia. And that's the one he's going to. So that goes on there. He gets a seal. Thank you, Ian. Ian's going to watch it later on. Um, Yusuf does not... Uh, he earns the seal, but does not earn the city bonus. Okay, that's the export action. Nice and easy. And then he earns four and four. Wow. One, two, three, four. Moving the right piece this time. One, two, three, four. I think we're done. First action has been done. My go. Now, unfortunately, it didn't move from the space that I wanted to do. I can't remember how you consolidate. I mean, you just move the thing to the right. I remember that, but I can't remember what it gives you. It gives you an immediate, but the red ones give you an immediate bonus. And the immediate bonus for that is to carve a poem. I can't carve a poem because I don't have any resources. I need to get myself some resources. Uh, that's where I wanted to go. But I was kind of hoping that the master, master builder might have moved out of the way first. So instead, we could just move around and get some free stuff. Free stuff sounds good. I, I do like free stuff. Um, but that is, oh, that's actually production. It's, it's, I don't know, what is that? That's this. I just need to look up that action again. It's not that action that I thought it was. That action is, earn a city bonus, choose a city where you have presence and earn the city bonus indicated on the tile with the city. And then process up to two raw materials into goods. Well, actually, that's quite nice. And then I can buy this for nothing. And it's two spaces away, and it's not going to cost me any money. Yeah, so we're going to do it. We're going to go one, two. So I'm going to get the city bonus for where I've got a ship, which is here. So I'm going to take a wood. Okay. Uh, consolidate earns the right bonus at the end of the round. It does if it's blue. If it's red, it's immediate. Because there's a lightning bolt on. Um, so I've gone there. I've, to I've done the city bonus, which is that. That's that done. Right. Next. Two lots of production. I'm just going to turn these into goods. So that turns into ceramics and that turns into uh, a bag of sugar. Right, done, is that me? Oh, secondary action, I'm taking that. Take the cloth. So yeah, could I have done the secondary action first? I can't quite remember, let's have a look. Um, main action, actions phase. So main actions, secondary actions. Yeah, is a secondary action. Does it have to come after your primary action or can you do them in any order? Is my current rules question. Secondary actions. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because it, it, it might have mattered then. Let's see what it says. Choose one of your active workers, whether they're going to work or rest. If you work, main and or secondary action. Yeah, I'm not sure. You can do the secondary action first. Okay, thank you. So in that case, I could have taken the cloth and I could have um, turned the cloth into a good if I wanted to. Um... Yeah, no, I think, I don't really know what I'm doing down here. I probably want to go into here. So, no, I think we're good. Right. Whose go is it? I've had one go. Yusuf's had one go. So it's Yusuf's second go. Master Builder. Right. So it's this space here. So we move the master builder closest to this space in a clockwise direction. 
which is that one. So that goes all the way around here, takes the secondary resource, but there is no secondary resource there because I've already grabbed it, uh, does nothing, but gets one point. Page nine, end of step four. Page nine, end of step four. Ah, uh, yeah, it says you can carry out these actions in any order, but always complete one before performing the other. Thank you, Sergio. Right, my go. He's still not moved off this space. I want him to move off this space so that I can go onto this space. <laughs> um, okay, what am I going to do with this one? Actually, I think I'm going to move this one first. Yeah, we're going to move this one. We're just going to go two spaces and I'm going to get four money. So it's three money plus one for every poem. So there's four money. Right, that's done. That's simplest action in the world. Almost. Right, come on, yourself. Get this master builder out of the way. No. Uh, moving to this section. Getting four points. One, two, three, four. And carving a poem. So this is second poem takes this one. Done. I think that's right. I think we read that earlier. Carved poem the first time, second time, last major poem in alphabetical order. Yep. Yeah. Done. Right. Um, my go. So I've got my two master builders left. That one's going to move next. We know that one's going to move. So I can wait on moving that one and move this one. So I'm going to move this one. Now, I can move up to two spaces for free and I can pay to move four. Uh, I can pay to move more. Oh, that's not where I am. Second reactions are expensive. I need resources. Do we just go here and, and do some trading? I think we do. Yeah, or I could go one, two, spend two money and do another storehouse action. And that's actually quite nice. I think that's quite nice. Gets me a raw material and gets me two money. So I get the two money back, effectively. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Let's... No, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to this one, so I use the market. So I get two money. Uh, and then I can do two trades. Uh, let me just let me just show you this on the... Um, is it preset five? Where's preset five? Preset five was there. We're going to move preset five to here. I'm just going to show you the trades that are possible. Here's the trades. Uh, so these are the trades possible. And I can do two of these. So we've basically got... I could... Um, sell one of the raw materials to get a coin or is that buy i think that's buy yeah i can buy a raw material for a coin i can sell a good for three uh and then these are the different resources so the four different resources in the game you can buy them or you can sell them or you could upgrade them so i think what i'm going to do with my two purchases is i'm going to buy So is, is that right? Is that just one to buy a raw material? Because that means I could just buy the ceramics from there. Uh, yeah, I think that I think that's right. So I'm going to spend one money and I'm going to buy. Remember, you never take out of the bag. I'm going to buy the ceramics from there. Let's just double check that action. Uh, Yeah, it's not really, a, it's just carry carry out two transactions. Yeah, and a transaction is... Oh, there's an advanced mode as well. Yeah, there's an advanced mode to this game. There's quite a lot of variability with it, which is quite nice. Here it is, yeah, buy. So obtain materials by paying the indicated dinars. Each purchase counts as one transaction. 
So what have I done? I've spent one dinar to buy uh, a raw material. And if I wanted to, I could spend another one to buy another raw material, which would immediately convert that into a good. And I'd end up with some cloth. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one to buy some gypsum. Should I buy gypsum or should I buy some wood? Um, I'm going to buy some more wood. Although you do need gypsum for some things. No, I'm going to buy some gypsum. There you go. I'm going to put it in there. You can buy raw material for one. I didn't do the bottom of the last poet. Oh, didn't I? Did I forget again? No, that was the four points. Yeah, I think I think I did, but I did it first. I confused everybody by doing the four points first before I bought the poem. I'm pretty sure I did it. Pretty sure I did it. Right, so that's me done. Finally, Yusuf's master builder is moving. Moving, and it's this one, and it's moving to there. Uh, it takes that. So that's just that's just gone. Uh, see, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do the four points now just to confuse everybody. Because um, otherwise I might forget. And I'd, I know you're supposed to do it top, middle, then bottom. But I don't know if there's a reason why you can't do the bottom first. So anyway, we're doing major construction. So we've done this before. We know how major construction works. It's taking the highest numbered one that matches that, which is this one. And then you just flip it over. Doesn't get any bonuses, just flips it over. Done. And we've already done the four points. Boom. Right. My last turn is I'm going to go here. Although, do I have space for all of this stuff? Oh, no. After planning this for the entire turn, I now don't have space for all of the resources. Oh, you idiot. Only moves one step on the favour track. I forgot the moving of one step on the favour track. That's for doing a major construction, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. So I can go here, which is what I wanted to do. But I, and I can take two resources. I can take like marble and wood because I can fit them in this. This storehouse can store three things. But that's throwing something away. Uh, Yusuf's workers are discarded face up. I, I am discarding them face up, but it says to put them on the bottom of the stack just to save save space. So yeah, Yusuf's cards are being discarded face up into the bottom of the stacks. So I'm going to change my plan. I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to go here and I'm going to pay one money. Uh, and we're going to do the storehouse action. And I'm going to take this one. Oh, God, look at this. Zooming ahead on that track. Yeah, we're going to take this one. And we're going to put it. We're going to put it over here, which gets me. One point. And then an immediate two areas and two money. Okay, and now I have a bit more space for stuff. And I'm going to spend one money and do a secondary action, and I'm going to take the cloth. But because I've already got the cloth, that cloth stays there, and instead that converts into, like, silk robes or something, which I can put there. Okay. I think we're done. I think we are done. That is the end of the round. Wow. Okay, so next what do we do? We do income. Oh, I haven't done any poems. I'm not really using that, am I? Uh, so there is no income. Right, well, that's that done. Um, what's the next steps? I'm sure these are printed somewhere. Yes, they are. So we've done income. We move to here. We're now in era two. So we don't use these anymore. We're now using these. Uh, we all have to pay three of these. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Um, we don't do a Sultan's Favour scoring because... Uh, a new tile hasn't gone on there. Um, workers stand up. And the gold ones move around. Okay, so outer ring. Uh, that one. It's four of them, isn't it? Yeah, that one, that one, that one and that one. The inner ring is two. It's twice as many as the, as the players. 
twice as many that a player has. Right, so we've done that, we've done that. Restock. Some sugar cane. Some more sugar cane. And some more sugar cane. Uh, we add a marble to there, but that marble is still there. It's getting a bit old, is that marble? Poems, nobody took any poems. Minor constructions, nobody took any minor constructions. Storehouses, storehouse. Uh, starting player, starting player goes to pink. And yeah, we can effectively remove these because we are now in era two. So those are gone. They cannot be built anymore. Right, we are now in era two and it is yourself to go first. How are we doing? For those solo gamers watching, what do you think of it? And if you're watching this video back afterwards, most of my views come from people watching back afterwards. Yeah, let me know what you think about it. Stephen's just joining the chat. Hi, Stephen. Hope you're okay. You've missed the painful part where we learn how to play. I mean, it wasn't painful. To be fair, the rule book is really good. Um, I don't know who wrote the rule book. I don't know who edited it, but the rule book is very clear. Uh, the only two issues that I have with the rule book are terminology. It calls the squares and not spaces. Uh, and also the other problem that I had with the rule book in terms of terminology is it kept, it keeps referring to scaffolds and scaffolding. There is no scaffolding on the board uh, that I can see. And I think it means these scrolls, but it calls them scaffolding in the rule book. And that's either a translation error or maybe the artwork used to be scaffolding uh, and it, it changed. But yeah, other than that, they were the only bits that I confused by. In terms of the rules themselves, they're really well written. And they're really clear. So if you're worried about the rulebook not being good, and you know me, if the rulebook isn't good, I am. I will be the first person to, <laughs> to say so. Right, are we ready? Round three. Moving the poet. So the poet moves to that space and then carving a poem. So it's a minor poem because it's the third one. The highest numbered one. That one's upside down. Highest numbered one is that one. There you go. Uh, and then also getting one point per poem. Has three poems, so gets three points. One, two, three. And that's it. Done. My go. Oh, so many choices. So many choices. I kind of want to go shipping. But I also want to do the minor improvements. But I've got this poem... That gives him points for additional poems. So I kind of want to do another poem. I should do another poem really. I've got the resources. But I'd also like some marble. Because uh, I've got the space in the storehouse. Okay. It's not an error in translation. It's an attempt to bring the theme out. Yeah. Okay. I get that. And it makes sense thematically. But when the rule book says to put the resources on the scaffolding, we literally spent five minutes looking for the scaffolding. <laughs> we didn't know where it meant. Um, I'm, I'm still not sure whereabouts it is because there's no there's no pictures in the rule book at that time telling you where. So I don't know whether it, it means this. If it means that, then, yeah, it wasn't clear. But that's what you can do. You can put the resources on here. Um, as I, I think we worked it out. Consolidate would get me a poem. Consolidate would get me a poem. Yes. Now the consolidate action is the handshake. The handshake is there. Oh, it's also there. So I could move two. Oh, and I could take that. Grab myself some free raw materials. Now, benefit of consolidating is that I'm going to get a bonus at the end. I am going to get a bonus at the end. Okay. Yeah. Thing is, what else am I going to do with this one? What else am I going to do with the merchant this turn? I think you're right. Yeah, let's do it. So one, two. We go there. It doesn't cost me anything. I'm going to take this for zero. So that goes there. And then we're going to do the consolidate action, which is very simple. I just move that to there. Um, and because it's red, I get the bonus that's printed on it. And I think that's it. I think that's how that works. Consolidating. 
Uh, move your ship to the right hand side. If one of your or more opponents is there, they get a point and a coin. And if the tile associated with it is red, you get the bonus action which you carry out immediately. So I immediately get to do the poem action. And we are. And we're going to take another blue one. Okay. I'm just going to undo slightly. I'm not going to do that secondary action just yet. Because I'm going to take... I'm going to take this. So this is the poem that I'm going to take and it's going to cost me it's going to cost me 2 because it's 1 plus 1 for every blue poem that I've already got. Um and I've already got one blue poem so this is going to cost me 2 money but this gets me 1 point every time I perform a secondary action. And that is what I'm about to do. So I spend 2 coins for it. I also have to spend resources and Instead of using that scaffolding, I'm using this scaffolding. So I could actually spend three resources if I want to, um, but I only have two. So I'm going to spend the wood and the gypsum, which is normally one point and two for three, but I get one point extra for each material used. So that actually gets me five points. Okay. And I get that. I'm just going to tuck it in there, actually. And now I do the secondary action. And that gets me a point. I think I've done that right. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that right. So if I'd have had another good, I could have used that at the same time. Um, but that's it. So my action was consolidate, but consolidating actually triggered that, which got me a poem, and getting the poem got me that. Combo, combo-tastic. Right, okay, Yusuf's turn. Yusuf is moving his master builder. Right, so the master builder is going to that space there. So this is the closest one. He's then performing the minor construction action, which Yusuf has not done yet. So let's read the minor construction action. Take the lowest numbered minor construction card from the rightmost column on the main board. Okay, I don't know why the rightmost column on the main board. From the rightmost column on the main board, starting from the top, that matches the Sultan's desired building type. So the build it, so the Sultan wants windows. So yeah, I don't... Hmm. After saying the rules are really good, I'm not quite sure why. Right most column starting from the top because it says the lowest numbered one. And they're not numbered. Yeah, there might be an error there. <laughs> Let's see what the rule book says. Because those cards are not numbered. And it says take, take the lowest numbered one. Um, yeah, take the lowest numbered minor construction card from the rightmost column of the main board, starting from the top that matches the Sultan's desired building type. That might be an error. Adam might be able to confirm that because I'm not seeing any numbers on those cards. And in fact, what it's saying is the right hand column starting from the top that matches that. Now, what if there isn't one that matches? Um, if no minor construction card matches, take the card in the rightmost column of the main board starting from the top. Okay, so he tries to match if possible, but then just takes whatever. But it, it says the right-hand column. So I don't know why he's not taking from the left column. He's, he seems to only want to take from those two cards. And I don't know why. I don't know why that would be. That seems... A little unusual, but that's the rules. The rules say from the right hand column. There's the right hand column. Neither of those are windows, so he just takes that one. Yeah, why why is that? That seems very, very odd. But anyway, that is Yusuf's turn. He then earns two points and one of these. Now I need to be careful with this because I'm about to lose four. And I've only got two. So I'm gonna have to get some of that stuff. How do I get some of that stuff? I can't remember how I get this stuff. Delivering goods to cities gets a bit. This is just points. Yeah. Oh, major construction. Some of the major constructions get it a bit. But not much. Hmm. Okay. Uh, whose go is it? Yusuf's had two goes. 
I've had one go. Right. So my go. Um, do we want to go shipping? Oh, the shipping is on the... <laughs> We've already done that. Architectural cards. That's what we could do. And and a secondary action, which gets me a point. So we could totally move around to there. I mean, we could do the major construction. I don't know. I haven't got any goods. I can't even do a minor one. I've literally got nothing. And I don't really want to move around here because that's really expensive. I mean, I do have the money. He's already moved that one. He hasn't moved this one yet. Oh dear. I spent all my stuff. Oh, it's tricky. I mean, can we take another poem? No, I don't have any resources. So... And that is activating a red one, so that's no good. So th that's, that's a no action, that's a no action. That's a bit of money. That's actually five money, although it will cost me one to go there. That's no good. Yeah, I shouldn't have spent both resources on the poem. Exactly right. I got greedy, and we know where that led. That led to a sad Paul, who now doesn't have enough resources, and is going to now struggle to get the resources. So, I'm going to have to go one, two. I'm going to have to pay two money to take three resources. Now, the resources from here are gypsum or wood. So, I'm going to take a gypsum and another gypsum and a wood. Um, and I'm going to shuffle the ceramics into there, just because I can, and I can put three things in there. Spanish rule book does not mention numbers. There you go. So yeah, that, that might be a translation issue then. So yeah, so it's talking about it's talking about numbers for the minor construction cards. Um, that's it. I went there. I got three resources. There is no secondary action. That is my turn done. Yusuf is moving his other master builder. It's moving to the bottom. He's then taking a minor construction action. We know how that works. It's this card now. Because <laughs> it's that one and then, right, yeah, so he's taking that one. Uh, and then gets three points. One, two, three. Done. See, it flows a lot, a lot quicker once, uh, once you're not looking in the rules. Um, what have I got left? I've got one master builder and a poet, but I've now got some resources, so I can use this poem. I don't have the money. It's going to cost me three money. I could use the seal as money if I'm desperate, but that seal was going to get me points. Then again, if I take another blue poem. That's going to get me a point. Okay, so Spanish rule book doesn't mention numbers and should take the card in the position most to the top and most to the right. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Let, let's take that one because that, that makes the most sense. We're not going to do what the rule book says. We're going to take that one instead because the Sultan wants windows, so he should take windows. Yeah. Uh, Adam might have to look at that and might have to issue some errata for the English rule book to clarify that. Um, so yeah, what are we doing? Are we are we doing the third? Are we doing another blue poem? I mean, what's this? You can use gypsum or wood as a base in a major or minor construction, no matter which base is indicated. Uh, oh right, okay. Okay, yeah, that's that can be handy. But for me, it's another blue poem, but it would cost me three three money to take, and I don't have three money. That's the thing. Can I afford the red poem? So I, I can afford the red poem. The red poem will only cost me one, um, and that allows me to undertake a minor construction, which I could use, but I'm not sure whether I want any of these. Although we were going to go for this one, weren't we? Which is two points for each minor construction, and I've got one. <laughs> I wonder if you're allowed to rotate these. Are you allowed to rotate these? If you could, that'd be quite cool. Hmm. Oh, and if I do that, I can do that. And if I do that, I can do that. <gasps> that works. If I match that with that, I get to do green, which is a ship action, and I could go shipping. And we could do all sorts of more stuff. Like 
go here. Hmm. Where's the other ceramics one? The other ceramics one is here. Is that? Oh, that's that's miles away. Absolutely miles away. Yeah, I do like the the crunchy decisions in this game. So, it's Master Builder or it's the Poet. The Master Builder is very likely going to go and do a minor construction, to be honest. So I think I'm going to do that first. So this Master Builder is going to go two spaces to there. Right. Now, this is interesting because... I could refresh them. Okay, so Adam has confirmed and it is a typo in the English rules. Excellent. Yeah, the cards are not numbered. Um, and also, the English rules say that it only goes for the right column. And I, I, I think that's wrong. I think it should take the one that it wants. And if there's a tie break, it goes right column first and then left column. I think that's what it should say. So... What are we doing? Are we doing? We could do major. We could do a major construction, and that's one of those things up there. And there are some things on there that are quite nice, including the shipping action. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we're going to do a major construction. So I've not done this yet. So major construction, I have to spend a gypsum. And then I may spend optionally two other resources, which have to be different, but have to be between wood and marble. Now, we know where this led me last time, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to spend any more resources. It's going to be a very, a very simple major construction. But I'm going to take this one. So that get, it's costing me a gypsum, which means I get one point. And what I'm going to get is I'm going to get one space up on the favour track. And I'm going to do the shipping action. One of the the export action, and we're gonna go. Oh, please tell me I can afford this. I mean, I could just go here. That gets me crystal glass. That oh oh hello. Yeah, we're doing it right. So we're gonna spend one money, and I'm gonna export to Reno de Aragon, and I gain a crystal glass, which is this stuff, nicest component. Uh, where's that gonna go? It's gonna go there. And remember, you can ship two goods. And if you ship the goods they want, you get even more stuff. Now, Reino de Aragon needs or wants ceramics and sugar. I have ceramics and sugar. So what we get is instead of one and one, we get two and two for each one. So that's four and four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Most awesomest move ever um, because I needed that for that. So that's it. That was my that was my main action. That was the major construction. I'm then going to spend my one remaining money to perform a secondary action and take this sugar cane. But because I've already got sugar cane, I flip that over instead and I get a point because of my poem. There you go. And I get the bonus for moving up the Sultan's favour track. Oh yes. Which is one or one. I'll take that one. Thank you. I forgot there's bonuses for the favour track. Right, we're done. Yusuf's final action is the merchant, and the merchant is moving to there. And doing the secondary action. And then also doing a shipping action. So, ceramics, that it doesn't, it's here. It has to be a ceramics city, which it isn't already in. So that's this one. It takes the seal. Now, I don't know what happens when we run out of ceramic cities, which is where we are now. Uh, move the sugar to my storage. Oh, yeah, thank you. You don't just flip it over, do you? You put it in there. Um, and then four points. One, two, three, four, and four of these. Oh, ah. I just got ahead there. Right. My last action of round three. We have Poet. I could... I know I don't have the money. Now, I could rest. Because I can't even afford... I can't do that because I haven't got the money to buy a poem. I can't do that because it would cost me a minute. I can't go there. So I think the poet is going to rest. So what you do is you bring them back here. 
lay them down, and you get one point and three coins. And that's it. End of round. Right, income. So I haven't consolidated any blue cities. Yusuf has, but I believe doesn't get the bonus for that. We then move this on, and that goes there, and we are now scoring... Where's my pointy stick? So because that has moved to there, and we've just added the second Sultan's Favour, we're now scoring both of these Sultan's Favours. So for each seal, one point, and for each blue poem, one point. Yusuf has four seals, so Yusuf gets four points. Uh, I have one seal, so I get one point. And then poems, well, Yusuf's got two, because they count as blue and red, and I've got two, <clears throat> so I get two as well. Oh, I, you lose the point. Oh, yeah, it's in red. Thank you. You lose a point for resting. Yeah, it is the point icon, but it is in red. It's not in black. Yeah. What do you mean it's not good resting? It's a good thing to rest. People should rest more. <laughs> there you go. Life lessons from Paul's live stream. That's what happens when it's late at night and I'm tired. Um. Anyway, so that's... That's that done. That's the Sultan's favours done. Now we both have to spend prior. Prior four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you ever have to spend this and you run out, bad stuff happens. Next, workers stand up. And the gold ones are going to move round. Yep, so one, two, three. Four, one, two, one, two. Right, done that, done that, done that. Replenish. Put one on here. I got one on there. Okay, done that. Replenish the marble, which still hasn't been taken. Replenish the poems. I need two more poems. Replenish the minor constructions. Uh, storehouses. Nobody took any storehouses. Start player. Start player stays with Yusuf. Right, off we go. Round four. I was hoping this would be about an hour and a half tonight, but as I say, my plan this afternoon was to get the game out, set it up, relearn it, spend a couple of hours, but I just, I just didn't have time today. So, um, yeah, it was a bit rough and ready at the start of the stream, but we got there with your help. So, Yusuf is moving his merchant. So the merchant is moving to that area there, which is this one. Is uh, taking the secondary action, then performing the consolidation. So, which one is it that they consolidate again? Ship on the left-hand side, city that matches the scoring criteria, I decide. It doesn't actually matter. Okay, so that one. Right. And then one point per consolidated area. So there's one, two, three. It's consolidated three. So it gets three points. One, two, three. Done. First card, done. My go. So the good news is my poet can come out uh, wherever. Um, and I probably want to carve another blue poem because I'm really all about my blue poems, even though I'm not doing any of this, am I? Really? Yeah, I'm really not. Not doing very well in this game. Uh, or, I mean, yeah, because I've taken this, this has kind of led me into a, a blue poem strategy. But... I don't know whether they're paying off because they just get more and more expensive. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. It means I'm going to get more points for it. We're going to get an insane amount of points for this one. Skycroft is saying carve the red poem for the minor construction, which would get me the ship. Get me the ship. So I'd get the minus construction. Oh, right. So to match the green ones, which then lets me ship. And I can ship the sugar and I can ship that. Yeah, that will get me a seal. 
but it won't I haven't got any ceramics I kind of want the ceramics first and then we've got all of these storehouses do we want any storehouses so what I could do is I could go here choose that one that's got the production action I could that that would get me the ceramics then I could ship hmm is there anything else I wanted to do first? I'm not sure there is. I mean, I would like quite, I would quite like that marble. But every round that I use my poet here, I'm not carving a poem. Hmm. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Rightly or wrongly, we're going to bring my poet out after having a nice rest and go on here. That gets me five money because I've got two poems. Money is so tight in this game. Five money. I'm then going to spend one money to take the second reaction of taking the marble. And because I've taken a second reaction, I get a point. Right. So my go done. Final answer. Yusuf is now moving his poet. Ah, now that's handy. Goes to there, takes the second reaction. Does nothing else, gets a point. Well, actually, that was that worked out quite well for me because I got it before he did. Right, back to me. So I got the money. If I really wanted to, I could now buy one of these major poems. But actually, that's worth two points to me. It's really not worth very much. But I think I would like a minor construction. Now that's here. I want to wait for that one to move. Uh, I mean, I could go shipping. It would actually get me some stuff. Yeah, okay. I think we're going to do it. We're going to move the merchant. One, two. I have to pay one because there's a, a gold one there. We're going to do the second reaction at a cost of zero, which gets me a point. I can't since I used my poet this round. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking ahead, <laughs> thinking next round. Um, so we're exporting. Now I've got some very, very nice clothes and some very, very nice bag of sugar. Um, that's an immediate bonus, which is a hammer, which is a construction action. Oh, hello. That could be used to give me a minor construction action or even a major construction action. So maybe we hmm, stop changing your mind, Paul. This is the problem. I keep changing my mind. I'm just thinking there's a major construction one over there. There's a very nice one that puts me up on the favor track. Gets me, gets me any resource whatsoever. And this might be better for me rather than that. Let's forget those minor constructions. Let's go for moving up on the favor track. But if I have the most pariahs at the end... That's 14 points. That's a that's a huge difference. This one might be worth four. This one might be worth 14. Minimum, it's worth six. But, 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 let's not get ahead of ourselves. I think, I think I want to ship here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not ceramics. But, no. No, I want to ship here because this is ceramics. That'll get me more points for this. Right. We're going to spend one money. We are going to export both of these goods to Florencia. Now, they only want one of them. They're going to take the other one, whether they like it or not. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to sail to there. So that one's worth two and two. That one's worth one and one. So that's three and three. Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I get a three coin bonus. Done. Yeah, done. That was my merchant done. Right. Yusuf. Uh, master builder time. Master builder is on the bottom space. So, ah. Right. Now, I think, let me just check this, but I think because his master builder is already there, that one doesn't move. That one would move, but you can't have one on the same space. I think we're going to draw a new card. 
just double check. Using the master builder closest in a clockwise direction to that space. May have to move one of them to a space where the other one is already present, in which case discard the worker card without resolving it and revealing you one. Yeah, I think that's what we're doing. But it doesn't do that. Instead, it does that, and it moves to here. Lays down, does the um, does the storehouse action. Now, we've not seen him do the storehouse action yet, so... Storehouse action, take the storehouse tile of the two available next to the worker's square, which displays the most store boxes, the tile. Um, take the tile closest to the space. If there are no storehouse tiles, take the one of the available tiles on the opposite side of the run. Right, okay. So very simple. Takes that one. Easy peasy. And scores two parries. Done. Right, my go. We have my master builders left. Uh, we keep flip-flopping over whether what we want to do. Page 19 looks like it just lays down. So, hang on, page 19. Yeah, not sure. Um, we've got some raw materials. We could convert those into... Uh, goods. Skycroft, Skycroft and Kitty both say, I think he will just lay down. Okay, let me just read this again and see if I've got this right, or if Adam's still there. Move the worker to the square in the corresponding rondel at the top of the card and lay the worker down. Yep. Yeah. Does not pay movement. If the worker is already on the space... Oh, simply, no, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, did that slightly wrong. Um, let's just fiddle that then and pretend that card is there. Okay, so correction, I got it wrong, but I'm not going to completely undo it because that means undoing all of that. Um, so if it's already on the space it's on, what you should do is you just lay it down and then you still do the things on the card. Thank you. But yeah, I'm not going to undo it. Um, even though it would actually benefit me. Anyway, <laughs> what am I going to do? I think I'm going to go here. So I'm going to go two spaces. I'm going to pay a coin for that. Uh, I'm going to pay. I'm then going to do this twice. So that's so it. Get two coins and then do this thing twice. Now then. Hmm, this is interesting because there's loads of money here for me if I wanted to sell my stuff. But I'm not sure I do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one money to buy this, but I don't actually get it. I upgrade that instead. Then I'm going to spend... <clears throat> another one money to buy some gypsum so that's my two trades and then i'm going to do the secondary action of buying that but again i don't buy that i actually upgrade that which cost me one but because i did a secondary action i get a point okay done yosef's last turn Master Builder, that should go. So now we're going to have it. So we've drawn that card. He's already on the space. So what we do is we leave him on the space and we lay him down. Then going to do a major construction action. And he's going to get two points. I'm going to do the two points now before I forget. And the major construction action is, wants to take uh, the highest numbered one with that icon on, which is that one. Okay, does get a favor there but then just flips that over and doesn't get any other bonus right and my last action is here oh, I should have sold the resources because now I'm faced with going and collecting three resources and I have no room for it oh 
You idiot, Paul. Why didn't you sell some stuff here? So, I mean, I could go here, which cost me two money. I can't go here. Oh, I mean, I could rest. I don't really want to rest. I'm going to have to spend two money. One, two. We're going to lay down there. Adam's got to go. Thank you very much, Adam. And thank you for, for supporting the channel by sending me a copy of the game. I'll speak to you soon, and I'll look forward to seeing you in Essen if you're going to be there. Right, so I'm doing this action, and I'm going to take that one. And it's going to go... Where's it going to go? Or I could reactivate one of my existing ones. Oh, now if I reactivate one of my existing ones, I will end up ahead on that track. Now that might work. But I do like the extra storage. No, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to reactivate this one. So I just get the bonus again, which is two of those. And two money. Done. And that's it. That is the end of the round. Okay, so... Uh, we move the round track on. We do income. No income here for me. Right, okay. Uh, we spend these things. It is five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, four, five. Uh, we then stand all the workers back up and move the gold ones round. So stand up. Move that one round, move that one round. One, two, three, four. And I've not done the merchants. I don't think I've done the merchants. Okay, so we've done them. Restock. And this is the final time, because this is the last round of the game. One, two. And uh, we also put the marble. Yay, the marble was finally taken. Marble is back. Poems, minor stuff. Start player goes to me. Well, I, I choose who it goes to. Um, and actually, based on where we are right now, I think I'm going to be the start player. Restock the storehouses. Okay, we're done. Last round of the game. Me first. And the reason why I've gone first is because I want to do this action first. And we're going to do a poem. Now, it's going to be the major poem, so it's going to cost me four. And I think I'm going to try, I'm going to take this one. So at the end of the game, I'm going to score 14 points if I'm ahead on that track. Or six points if I'm not. But I think that is probably better than both of these. First action done. Oh, I have to, I have to spend resources and stuff to do that. Uh, and I'm actually going to spend the whole lot. So we're going to use, uh, yeah, so I can start it with wood. So we start it with wood, and I'm then going to use marble, and I'm going to use some crystal glass. Now, that is going to get me four, seven, nine points, but because I'm using this, it gets me an extra three. That's 12 points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go. Save the best till last. So yeah, I spent all of my resources. Possibly shouldn't have done that. I'm going to change one of the woods for a gypsum and lose a point. There you go. Yes, closing the gap. Definitely. I mean, I kind of been saving up for that. No secondary actions. That is me done. Right. And I've no idea how the end game scoring works for Yusuf. We'll find out when we get to it. Okay, first action. Merchant. Merchant is going to here. Pink merchant goes to here, lays down, takes the resource, performs the export action. <clears throat> now, there's no build, there's no things now. He's in all the ceramic ones. So where does he go? Export. Take one of your ships from the Kingdom of Granada and place it on the left hand side of a city that has a seal and matches the scoring criteria of the trade card. If there are only cities left that match the scoring criteria of the trade card, but without a seal. He's already there, like this one. It matches the trading, the criteria of the trade card, but doesn't have a seal. 
You must place his ship in one of those spaces where he has no presence. Right, done. That's easy. Boom. Okay. And next he's consolidating, which is this one. And then he gets three and three. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, done. My next action. I have three actions left in this game. I need to export. It's going to cost me two money. It's not going to get any cheaper. Two money. One money to move an extra space and one money because there's already somebody there. And I'm going to export and it's going to be these two goods. Oh, wait a minute. I have no money. Oh, I have no money. Undo, undo, undo. Arrgh. Do I get anything for the AI consolidating where you were already? Oh! Oh, good point. Good point. I'd forgotten that rule. Very, very good point. Right. Let me just go back. I might, that might give me the money that I need. It might have just saved me. Um, so. If one or more opponents already had a ship on the right hand side of that city, they get one point and one dinar from the reserve. OK, so I'm owed one money and a point. Right. So can I do this now? I think I can. It's going to cost me two money to do the action I want to do. Then I want a city that I'm not in that wants ceramics where I can afford to get to, which is here. So we've got to do it. We've got to do it. Two money to go to here. I use the seal as one money and the other money to move a ship to here. I ship these two goods. Uh, that one's worth one and one. That one's worth two and two because it wants it. So that's three and three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, and then the immediate benefit is I, I take a good. So that's not going to do very much for me, but I'll take that one and it becomes a good. Yeah, you can decide the city that gives you the bonus. So, yeah, that's quite nice. Okay, I think we're done. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I mean, I'm I'm getting about the same points as uh, as Yusuf is for this. In fact, no, Yusuf's getting more points because he's consolidated in more cities. Right, Yusuf's go. Three turns left. Poet. Poet is moving there and carving a poem. Now, this is the fourth poem, so it's another major one which is the highest letter, which is D, poem goes there. Boom, simple turn. And, and doesn't get any points printed on the bottom of the card. My go, this is my penultimate turn. I have two master builders left and I don't know what to do with them. I mean, I don't know if resources are worth anything at the end. They probably are. You can't, you don't, you don't get a chance to do very much in this game, do you? <laughs> How do I get the parriers? Oh, I need to build that. To build that, I need that, which I've got. So, this is what we need to do. We need to build. I have no money. Oh, I've got no money. I can rest with one of my workers in order. That the other one has enough money to be able to do the action that I want to do. Oh, this is this is painful because the only thing I can, I've got no money at all. So the only thing I can do is I can move two spaces with this one, which goes to here, which gets me three resources, which it's not going to do anything. So I think I have to. I have to take this one off. And we have to rest. I lose a point. I get three money. Yosef's go. Yosef's mass builder is moving to that space there. So it's this one that moves. It goes there. It takes the secondary action. It's taken the storehouse. 
The one with the most boxes, if it's a tie, takes the one closest to it. He gets one up on this track and two points. Right. My last turn of the game. If I've got this right, I'm going to move one, two. I'm going to spend one coin because there's somebody already there. We're going to do a major construction. I think. We're doing a major construction. Major construction costs gypsum at least. And then up to two other goods which must be different and can't be gypsum. So, wood. That gets me three points. And I take this, which moves me one up on the favour track, which gets me a raw material or a good. I'll, I'll just take this raw material. Uh, and it moves me three up on this track. One, two, three. And then I flip it over. That's it. That's my go done. So yeah, that card is is a bit bonkers that that one would have got me two points and that one get, going to get me 14. Right, okay. I can also choose previous bonuses from the favour track. Oh, right. Okay, thank you. I'd forgotten about that. So whenever you move up the favour track, you can have any previous bonus. So I don't want that. I'll have one of those instead. Just in case. Yosef's final turn is a master builder. The master. Oh, yes, he didn't get it. Right, so the master builder is moving to here, but it can't be here because there's already one there. <sighs> Tense. What's it going to be? It's going to be there. He's then going to do a storehouse action, which is that one. Then he's going to do a major construction action. Now, there are no ones available that match that. Oh, no, there are. There's that one. So he takes that one. He moves up on the favour track uh, and he flips it over. And then he gets one point for each major construction, which is four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Yeah, you could. If you did seven, you could focus on it. But the point is, getting 14 points from this is really, really hard. You have to build seven of them. This, you just have to be one space ahead and you've got 14 points. That seems a bit easy to do compared to the other one. Anyway, I think we're done. That is all of the actions done. We do end of game stuff. So we move to here. Well, we do blue income, of which I still don't have any. We move that on, and at this point, we are now going to score all three of these. So we're going to score seals, one point, blue poems, one point, and then those or those, two points each. Uh, and this is where Yusuf is going to score a lot, because he's got four seals. So he gets four points. I don't have any seals. Uh, blue poems, he's got two blue poems. I've got two blue poems. Uh, but then this, he's got four of them. So that's eight points We're from 66 to 74. Whereas I've only got one, two. Oh, no, in fact, he's got an extra one. So he gets an extra two points. I forgot you had a window. I get four points. One, two, three, four. I think that's how that was. So that's really interesting. If that came out first. Yeah. Right. Um, right, so we've done that. We've done the Sultan's Favours. Now the Pariahs, we, we both have to spend six. He's got it. I've also got it, but I've got some left. Uh, then I believe it's end of game scoring. I think so. Oh no, he's changing start player. Right, now it's end of game scoring. So, let me just check what the special rules are. For the solo game end of game scoring if there is any end of game doesn't receive any income even if yeah okay leftover seals resources and dinars yourself earns one point for each seal he has he has given yourself only earns one pp for each seal he has given that he manages no resources yeah sorry there's that's that's a bad translation i've no idea what that means that's not quite correct English. Um, Yusuf only earns one PP for each seal he has. Oh, comma. 
or brackets, given that he manages no resources. Oh, right, okay, I see. Because he has no resources, he's not going to get the points for the resources. It's just the way that it's worded is a little bit odd. So he's basically got four seals, so he gets four points. Look at that, he's on 80. Me, I get one point for each seal, zero. One point for each good, one. One point for each marble, no. One point for each crystal glass, no. And one point for every two money. I got two money. That's the point. Yeah, I've not won this. I have not won this at all. Um, but I assume he scores. Does he score for the major poems or not? He says this face proceeds normally with the following exceptions. So yeah, I think he scores for the other stuff. Uh, end of game. Major poems. Each player scores their own major poems, and I think that's it. So I score 14. Huzzah! So I go from 61 to 75. But I think Yosef is going to score. Oh, and we've got the trade card as well. Yeah, major poems and trade. So we got the trade. Uh, so Yosef earns 14 or 6 if you are the first, second or third player with the longest chain of consecutive chips. Well, I'm pretty sure he does. Because he's got one, two, three. And I don't have three. So he's got 14 points from that. So we've lapped. <laughs> Which is weird because he doesn't go to 100. Uh, he also earns points for having advanced on the Sultan's favour. So he's advanced one, two, three, four spaces. So he gets another nine points. Oh, yeah, I haven't won. Six, seven, eight, nine. And then the trade card. Trade card is two, four, six, nine, twelve, or fifteen for being present in one, two, three, four, five, six cities, and an extra one point for each of those cities which are consolidated. So he's in uh, one, two, three, four. He's in five cities that require ceramics, which is twelve points. And out of those cities, he's consolidated one, two, three, four of them. Okay, I'm in one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, I'm in four of them. So that's nine points. And I'm consolidated in one of them. And there we go. So yeah, I didn't win. So Yosef scored 80 plus 39. So what's that, 119? Yeah, 119, and I scored 85. Anyway, the game's over. My thoughts on the game. And as I, as I mentioned at the start, this is not a sponsored stream. I was sent a preview copy of the game, but I'm not being paid at all for creating this video. So I can be completely honest and I'm completely open um, with what I think about the game. I think the game's great. As far as the game goes... I think the gameplay is really good. I think there's enough depth and enough enough variability that I would I mean I want to play this again. If I wasn't struggling to stay awake right now, I'd I'd be I'd be playing this game again and I could probably get a game done in about 45 minutes. Cuz a lot of this video was me learning how to play and watching the chat and getting things corrected. So thank you very much for the chat for keeping me honest. But I like the solo mode as well as liking the game itself and I've only played it at two player. I do want to play a, a, a more play a higher player count, even though it is very much a multiplayer solitaire. You are not interacting with the other players in any way, other than you might have to pay extra if somebody is on the space that you want to go to. But there's no actual player interaction other than somebody grabbing something before you wanted it. That's it. I have no problem with that at all. So that's really good. But I like all of the mechanisms of the game. I class it as a medium weight game, maybe medium to heavy, probably medium to heavy, actually, because there's there's quite a lot of different interlocking mechanisms uh, in there and a lot of different ways that you can get points and a lot of different strategies that you can pursue. You saw me thinking I was going down one route and then changing my mind. And as it was, I got that card that got me 14 points for actually doing very little. Um, so from a from a game design point of view, whilst I like lots and lots of parts of the game 
I feel a major poem that gets you 14 points if you just manage to squeak ahead. As I say, I didn't really have to do very much for that. Whereas to get the same amount of points as this one, I'd have had to work really, really hard. Also, just after saying how good the rule book was, and it is really well written and it's really good, we found a couple of points in the English rule book where there was an, an error. So the whole bit about how the solo AI takes these minor improvements is wrong. Uh, and Ludanova will correct that and there'll be some errata on BGG or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's wrong. It should always take the one that matches the symbol of the Sultan's favour. And then the order is the tie break. Um, something must have changed during development of the game or copy paste error or something like that. But yeah, no, I think the game's really good. Really like it. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I hope you found this video useful. Um, and as I mentioned at the start, not a sponsored playthrough. So these playthroughs that I do, in fact, uh, I've got I've got a couple of unboxings this week and I've got this playthrough tonight and I'm also doing Woodcraft on Friday, which is another hot Essen game. Uh, neither of these, none of these videos are sponsored. Um, so they're purely made possible thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign. So big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for making this possible. And if you do like the content that I create and you want to support the channel, uh, the only reason I'm able to keep the channel going is through the support of the Patreon campaign. All of my advertising revenue goes to charity. So I don't make any money from advertising on YouTube. Um, yeah, it all goes to charity. So yeah, big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. And you can fund the channel at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Why become a Patreon supporter if you're not a Patreon supporter? Well, you get access to a lot of behind the scenes videos. So normally I would do what I've done tonight. And this would be a behind the scenes video for Patreon supporters. The reason I haven't done that tonight is I simply have so many games that are coming out at Essen that I want to cover and I don't have the time to do what I've done tonight and then do a public playthrough as well. So that's why this has been very rough, very rough and ready. Um, but yeah, my Patreon supporters do have access to a number of these behind the scenes videos where I'm learning a game and practicing it and things like that. Um, anyway, yeah, we're all done. I, I will see some of you in Essen if you are there. If you are there, come and find me at the... Uh, so Falafair Games booth, I'll be demoing Frosthaven in the mornings and I've got a meet-up and various other things. <sighs> We're done. I'm going to go to bed and read the Woodcraft rulebook <laughs> ready for Friday. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Take care, everybody. I will see you all next time. Good night. Good night.